Hi, I'm Marie Stang, and I'm the administrator at the Kimberley Heritage Museum. And this is a Kimberley History Short. Today, I think it's important to talk about the legacy of the Sullivan Mine. The Sullivan Mine really built the community of Kimberley in the way that before its discovery, there weren't many people living here. And after its discovery, of course, the town of Kimberley sprang up. The mine was discovered in 1892 by four discoverers, Walter Burchett, Pat Sullivan, Ed Cleaver, and John Smith. These four men came from the West Kootenai overland walking and made the trek because they had heard of the strikes that were happening on the North Star Mountain, which is our present day ski hill. When they got here, the whole mountain had been claim staked. There was really nothing left to go prospecting for. They crossed the small Mark Creek Valley onto the other side and made camp. They prospect a bit, they stayed overnight, they left their compass. A week later, they came back for their compass, did a bit more prospecting, and lo and behold, found the outcrop of the Sullivan Mine. These four men worked their discovery from 1892 to 1896. Upon that period, they sold their claim for $24,000 and parted ways. A syndicate from Spokane, Washington purchased it and they ran the, the claim from 1896 until 1909. In the meantime, we have the Consolidated Mining and Smelting Company forming in 1906, and they are in the West Kootenai, and they have the mine at Moye. So they hear about the strike of the Sullivan, and they're interested, of course, so they come and take a lease on the Sullivan in 1909. They purchased it in 1910 for $200,000. So at that time, there wasn't much going on here. They hadn't figured out how to break down the ore. The small smelter in Marysville did a bit of a job of it, but it really couldn't get all of the minerals out. So Consolidated Mining and Smelting set their chemical engineers on fixing the problem. How do we get all of the minerals out, all 10 things? They came up with a method known as differential flotation and they built the concentrator in an area called Chapman Camp in 1922. That brought another influx of workers to the community and Kimberley was growing fast. The mine moved along and chugged along and along come World War II. So production as an essential service was, was kept steady. The war effort here was really focused on the mine. So depending on what you did for a living, you really weren't conscripted into the to services because you couldn't be replaced at the mine, and that was more important. After the war in the 1950s, the Consolidated, which also had a fertilizer division, which made Elephant Brand fertilizer, came along and decided to build a plant at Kimberley. So in 1953, the fertilizer division opened here. So we had the Sullivan Mine, the Sullivan Concentrator, and the, the fertilizer all working. In its 91 years of ownership of the mine, the Consolidated, or Kamenko, Tech Kamenko as we know it, employed on an average 1,000 people a year for their 91 years. In 1990, the mining company, Kamenko, announced the closure of the Sullivan Mine. This would take place in the year 2000, which eventually would have, was bumped back to the year 2001. The last ore train from the Sullivan Mine to the Concentrator was on December 21st, 2001, thus ending the 109-year history of the Sullivan Mine. I'm Marie Stang, and this has been a Kimberly History Short.